So if you have a camera and you're trying to take time lapses, it's sometimes a really cool effect if the camera's actually moving while it's recording the time lapse. But this is a, a hard effect to achieve because the camera has to move exceptionally slowly uh, or else it just like zips through. And it also needs to move very smoothly. So the, it doesn't need to be like bouncing up and down the whole time that it's, it's moving side to side. So you have to have a mechanism for making it smooth and slow. If you're trying to get something to move really slowly, you need a really obscenely high gear ratio. And the highest gear ratio systems that exist are worm gear drives. So I have this three foot length of quarter 20 threaded rod because it's the closest thing to a giant worm gear or lead screw that I could get. And uh, if you put a nut on this, you can spin it pretty darn quick. And uh, it moves linearly much more slowly than uh, then you're spinning it. So if you're trying to take the uh, rotational uh, motion from like a motor and make a camera move from one end of the slide to the other in about an hour, that's your best bet. So I actually have the rig set up on a bench here because I'm about to take a picture of the bell tower, but uh, this motor assembly on the end is what actually like chucks the threaded rod in and spins it down the whole length of the camera slide. And uh, I really don't remember where exactly I got it from. It may have been from like a tape recorder or something like that a really long time ago, but it was in my big shoebox full of motors and it was the thing with the highest gear ratio. So the back of it, I soldered on a, uh, an old USB port, which means that I can run it off of a, uh, an external battery that I'm actually also using to run the camera because it's almost dead. And uh, there are some laser cut parts on the front right here and actually a little piece of plastic that is HDP off of a milk carton. That whole thing fits together and actually holds on to a quarter 20 nut that um, you like double nut the HDPE in between and it holds on to the threaded rod so that the threaded rod spins all the way down and doesn't just untwist itself from the end. The first time I tried to build a sliding time-lapse camera rig, I had a really simple design. It was a single piece of PVC and a single quarter 20 threaded rod, and they were right on top of each other attached at the ends by big wooden brackets that would hold them where they needed to be, and a, uh, a motor assembly at one end that would actually spin the threaded rod. But then down the whole length of it, um, there were just these two pieces. and wherever the camera was, the camera was actually attached to a thin sheet of plywood, it was like quarter inch plywood, they had two holes in it, one of which would slide over the PVC and one of which would go uh, around the threaded rod. So you could put a nut on the threaded rod and it would push this thing all the way down. The problem is that the threaded rod bowed significantly over like three feet with just a little bit of weight on it if the camera would make it lean forward or backwards. So the camera would be over here and then it would go down and it would lean forwards as it bent the threaded rod and then it would come back up at the other end where there was another backstop. And uh, that was obviously not an effective solution. The Mark II, I guess, was really not a dramatic change 
the real problem I was trying to solve was the fact that the camera would bow in the middle, which just means that the camera had to be supported by something other than the threaded rod. And to do that, this is actually that design. I've taken the motor assembly off one end. Actually, it broke off that end. But um, it had two pieces of PVC. And the camera actually had two slots, or the mount for the camera actually had two slots. So it would rest on the PVC like that. And it could slide up and down. And it would not bow back and forth. The threaded rod attaches in the, at the top right there, so you can put a nut on this, and the nut binds against the PVC, and as you spin the threaded rod, it pushes this down. The problem, as you can probably see as I'm pushing this, is that it really likes to bind. There's a lot of friction in this scenario, and so it wasn't leaning forwards and backwards anymore, but it was actually jerking side to side as the nut slowly pushed on it. And it would build up force and then it would let go and then it would build up force and it would let go. So it was a really jerky motion and that was also not an effective solution. The Mark III, however, was an effective solution. So conveniently, I got to reuse the, the threaded rod from the first two designs. I got to reuse the motor assembly from the first two designs and, of course, all of the actual camera mounting gear. So this is said Mark III, <laughs> and uh, it's an all wooden track that is made of a whole bunch of laminated pieces of laser cut plywood. So it's a design that was actually sort of informed by uh, watching one of the uh, builds on Tested where they make a sword out of plywood and they have to laminate a whole bunch of the layers together in order to keep it flat. These were all really bowed pieces of plywood, but when you stick like five layers together and use four and a half tubes of cyanoracrylate to do it, it, uh, it stays pretty darn rigid. So uh, I was happy with how that came out. The key to controlling the camera is that you have to have a low friction slide that does not depend on the threaded rod for stability. So this is the camera dolly. It's got a whole bunch of quarter inch holes in the middle so that you can stick a bolt through anywhere and attach any sort of tripod mounted thing you want. Here I've got the GoPro on a little like ball socket. But the uh, track is actually made to fit this dolly specifically. So the underside of this has a bunch of roller skate bearings, 8mm like regular buy them on Amazon roller skate bearings. And the track has a raised section in the middle that those bearings actually just fit around. So I'm using the bearings as wheels, sort of. And uh, it you can actually <laughs> hear it slots into the track right there. And then it slides very easily with some friction, because I'm not using the bearings totally right, and they're sort of rubbing on the side, but very little friction, especially compared to the Mark II that I was showing a second ago. And the way you drive this is to just stick a threaded rod in here, and attach it to the motor at the end. And there's actually no, um, I mean, you can see it's sliding around and the camera is completely fixed without that. So there it is, driving it from the threaded rod. And then you stick the threaded rod into the motor assembly from before, same motor assembly, and you press the button and it goes. The other nice thing about this design is that when the dolly reaches the end of the piece of threaded rod, it just sort of unchucks itself and falls to the end of the track.
So to demonstrate some action shots taken with the fig rig and how stable they can be, despite the fact that I'm going to be running around, we have Bailey here who has uh, graciously volunteered to run some agility course obstacles for me and all of you too.